Welcome to Ali's channel. Today we're going to be cooking and freeze drying beef teriyaki. I'll be using Angus beef and we're going to be cutting it into very small and thin slices. This way it's easier to marinate as well as it is much easier to rehydrate. We're also going to be using five big garlic cloves and we're going to be cutting it into very, very small pieces. Next, we're going to be adding a full cup of brown sugar. This is a half cup, so I'm gonna be adding two of these. And next, we're going to be adding a full cup of soy sauce. You can adjust these quantities depending on the quantity of meat that you are going to be using. In this case, I am using about five to six pounds of beef. We're also going to need a half cup of vinegar. This is optional. You can only use one quarter cup if you prefer. Mix well. And next we're going to be adding one teaspoon of dried ginger. You can use fresh, but I just don't have it right now. So I'm using powdered ginger. Mix well. And then we're going to be adding this mixture to the beef. I'm going to be marinating the beef for about four hours. The longer you leave it, the better, the more that these uh, flavors are absorbed by the meat. You can do at least one hour, that will be okay. But in my case, like I said, it'll be about four to five hours. Mix everything well, so every piece of meat is in contact with the marinade. And it goes to the fridge. Once the four hours have passed, I am going to be adding this to a crock pot and it's going to be cooking overnight in low. After the meat has been cooking for a few hours, I am going to remove the lid and I will continue to cook it for about two more hours. This is mainly to make sure that some of that liquid evaporates. After a couple of hours, I'm going to turn it off and wait until the meat has cooled down enough so that I can put it back in the fridge. The reason for this is for that fat on top to harden a little bit so it's much easier to remove. After you have removed all of the fat, it's optional if you want to heat it up a little bit or you can simply start transferring the meat onto the trays. Again, if you don't want to freeze dry it at this point, this is ready to eat. But in this case, I am going to be transferring everything onto the trays so that we can get it ready to put in the machine. I am going to pre-freeze this. I normally do that. I like to save some time on the machine and I do have the space on the fridge. So I usually pre-freeze everything I put into the freeze dryer. I was only able to get two full trays of meat. So I'm going to be adding two veggie trays so that I can optimize the space on the freeze dryer. I had to add some extra dry time since I wasn't going to be available once the cycle was going to be ready. So the total hours was a little bit over 28 hours. I always cover the trays since I live in an area with high humidity and this type of meat absorbs very quickly the humidity. I am going to be packaging the meat in a small mylar bags and I will be adding an oxygen absorbent before I seal the bags. Remember to label them and date them. 
then I usually keep them inside of a plastic coat for protection. This meat can last up to 25 years if stored correctly. If you like this video, don't forget to click the like button. And if you would like to see more videos like this, subscribe and click the notifications bell. Thank you for watching.